Okay, Shalom. Alright, first off, I want to say all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yah Shai, Bahashim Makah Kodash, Dapa Anasha Apostles and Elders of GMS, and um, to the elect doing the work of sincerity and in truth throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom. Alright, so uh, this is uh, G uh, GMS Precepts. My name is Nazar Kud. Uh, with a quick lesson, I just wanted to go over, um, I wanted to touch on the topic as far as a, a clergy response team. Okay, and their job, the clergy response team or the Christian clergy response team, their job is to quell the people, um, you know, on, the, on an oncoming attack. <coughs> or if there's a catastrophe, uh, their job is to quell the people. If there's martial law, their job is to inform their people, inform the congregation to what? To listen to the government, listen to big government, do what they say to do. Okay, they're mandating a, 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 a microchip take it okay they're telling you to go into FEMA camps go okay the government is telling you to do this do it when it's and if when it's now it becomes a problem when it's contrary to the scriptures man because as far as if you're a, a Hebrew Israelite uh, and, and you take that microchip matter of fact it tells you what the most High tells you what, what he'll do to you okay so in all instances, you, you can't listen to the government all the goddamn time, man. All right? But that's something the clergy response team is going to inform you to do. Why? Because they have that what's called the 501c3 charter, and they're uh, 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 ordered to teach certain things, and they're ordered, basically, they're run by the government, man. Okay? I'm going to go to the point in Revelation 14. It says... Um, I'll start at, this is, this is Revelation 14 and 9. It says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And what's that referring to? That's referring to taking part in that. You're going to be... A uh, 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 fuel or stubble for it for that nuclear fire for that thermal nuclear fire which is going to happen here in America if you take that chip okay because you taking that chip you're professing who your God is you're saying your God is Esau okay because that microchip is a signet of um of uh, submission and you and and whoever gave it to you that's your ruler all right when if you're a Hebrew Israelite, your number one ruler, your number one power is supposed to be Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, not a goddamn Edomite. All right, so that's that's uh, if you're a Hebrew Israelite and you do that when a, when a, when a Christian clergy team or whatever informs you to do that, look, take the chip. It's not the mark of the beast. Take it. The Most High is gonna put you to death for that, man. If if you take it willingly, man. Okay. So I got an article here, uh, which further explains the job of the Christian clergy team. Uh, clergy response team uh, They've been used before this article it points out they were used in Katrina, which is the paragraph I'm, I'm going to read now So this is uh from KSLA Dot com is from a news news 12 or whatever. I don't know where they're out of but I'm just gonna read this point here in this article and it reads um, What's this the third fourth paragraph? It says if martial law were enacted at home meaning in America like depicted in the movie The Siege. Now, The Siege is a movie starring Denzel Washington, Bruce Willis. And what happened in The Siege? There was a martial law enacted in um, New York City. Okay? In Manhattan, there, it was a martial law enacted. And the, the whole city was locked down. Nobody could go in and out. And there were FEMA camps in there, man. That's a good movie brother should watch, The Siege. Right? It says, if martial law were enacted at were enacted here at home like depicted in the movie The Siege, easing public fears and quelling dissent would be critical. Okay? It's going to be critical, man. That's where they... Uh, uh, well, I'll just read it. It says, and that's exactly what the clergy response team helped accomplish in the wake of, a, in the wake of Katrina. Because what did they do? They told, their, they told them to give up your guns, listen to the government, go to those FEMA camps, go to those... Uh, uh, Camps, whatever, do whatever they say they do, and that, and and what happened? It, it wound up being to their demise, man. Okay, okay. So that's their job. Their job is to inform the people to listen to big government. So if you have a group, and you you, you even have Israelite groups that have that charter, 
that will tell the people, listen, don't listen to those conspiracy guys. The microchip, take it is just for identification. It is not the uh, uh, the mark of the beast. Okay, it's June. Ain't no microchips. That's that's what they'll tell you. Mind you, uh, it the the the, the um, RFID chip is the the microchip. It is the mark of the beast. Okay, and if you take it, just like I just read in Revelation 14, if you do take that chip, that's your ass, man. That is your ass. Okay? All right, so that's enough with this article, right? Let me see this. Uh, uh, I think that's pretty much it on this article. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll read this. It says, such clergy response teams would walk a tightrope during martial law be between the demands of the government on the one side versus the wishes of the public on the other. In a lot of cases, these clergy would already be known in, in the neighborhoods in which they're helping to defuse that situation, assured Sandy Davis. He does. He serves as a director of the Cato Basier Office of Homeland Security, blah, 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 blah. So boom. So you're going to know these people, man. They're already going to be in your neighborhoods. Why? Because they've been, they've been set up to do so. Okay? So that's it for this article. That was a good one. And our next article I have here is uh, newswithviews.com. I'll put both articles in, in the description, but I want to read this one paragraph here when it compares uh, when it compares it to where it runs a contrast with uh, with Nazi Germany. Right? It says, in the same manner that the Nazi government co-opted the churches of Germany, the federal government in Washington D.C. is co-opting the churches of America today. During the rise of the Third Reich, Germany's pastors and churches were taught the same misinter misinterpretation of Romans 13 that pastors and churches in America are now being taught. And that's what they do. They use Romans 13 to say, look, uh, the Most High ordained uh, uh, this leader, which is true. The Most High did ordain this leader, but it doesn't say listen to, to that leader if it's if contrary to the scriptures, man. If, if, a, if a leader says, yo, go, go have homosexual sex tonight. Are you, are, are you going to do it just because the Most High ordained them? No. See, what we have to do, we have to have that same mentality that the same mentality as the seven brothers in Maccabees had, man. They refused to go again. They, they were forced to eat eat fly, uh, swine's flesh. Excuse me, I'm getting excited. They were forced to eat uh, swine's flesh. Okay, but guess what? They refused. They'd rather death than to do that. Why? Because they know the, mo the, the Most High is with them, man, at the end of the day. Right, so it says uh, um, during the rise of the Third Reich, Germany's pastors and churches were taught the same misinterpretation of Romans 13 that pastors and churches in America are being taught, um, are now being taught. And in the same way that Hitler used Germany's pastors and churches to promote his big government socialist uh, socialist agenda, America's pastors and churches today are being used to promote the big government socialist agenda emanating from Washington, D.C. So that's why any group, any group, man, I don't care if they're Israelite, I don't care if they're uh, Christians, you gotta watch some Christians, the Mackey Tackies, right? But if they constantly tell you to listen to big government, you gotta watch them, man. Because most likely, they, they, they have a 501c3 charter, man. Okay? All right, now we know we're supposed to, we're supposed to wait, wait upon the Lord, but if they force a microchip on you, which we know is coming, and which we know that's in Revelation the 13 and 14 chapter, and the, and, the, and, the, and the consequence of that, that the Most High is going to do to you, okay, you got to watch out for people that say that, man, that say that to, to, to take that, okay? Mr. Bush used, uh, uh, Mr. Bush used the churches to promote female clergy response team, and now Mr. Obama, I guess this is an old article, now, and Mr. Obama is using the churches to promote the federal government socialized health care system. Okay? All right, so yeah, I just got that um, paragraph because it, it uh depicted it uh it, it made a correlation or relation with, with, with Nazi Germany, man, which America which which Nazi the whole the whole which, which which Nazi Germany that was a lot of test ground for a lot of stuff that they use today. Okay? That was like a breeding ground. See, they in, throughout history they use certain situations and learn from it. So a lot of tactics they use in Nazi Germany they use here in America today, and that being one of them. All right. So back to now to the scriptures. This is Matthew seven and fifteen. It says, "Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, man, because those clergy response team or 
your so-called spiritual religious leaders, they're going to come to you in, in, uh, in sheep's clothing, man. They're going to come to you like they, they have your best interests in mind. mind. Mind you, they have their own interests in mind. They have their pockets in mind with that 501c3 charter, okay? All right, it says, because, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves because that's what they are, man. You know, and I keep thinking about this nigga, um, Nate, man. He, he's uh, he's he's going to tell this congregation to take that shit, man, which is, you know, whatever, man. That's 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 the uh, lot, man, you know. But uh, if they are men or the Lord within Nate's camp or any camp or any group, they'll, they'll come out of that. Okay? Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves, right? Let me read this other scripture here. This is uh, Psalms 52 and 2. And, and you know what? The Most High is beautiful because he shows us, he gives us characteristics of Esau. Okay? And one of them is this. He's a goddamn liar, man. Okay? One of them, he's a goddamn liar. He's a goddamn deceiver. That's why he earned a name. He earned the title Devil. Okay? Why? Because uh, if you go into the word Devil, it means Diablo, which means deceiver. Who is the biggest deceiver on the planet Earth? If you wanted to break it down to a race... What race is the biggest liar on the face of the earth? Without a doubt, you have to say Esau, the so-called white man, right? So this is Psalms 52. And with these scriptures, he, he lets us know who, who, who it is. I'm about to run out of time. It says, uh, Psalms 52 and 2, Thy tongue does devise of mischief like a sharp razor, working deceitfully. Okay? Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness. Okay, I'll read that again. It says, Psalms 52 and 2, Thy tongue deviseth mischiefs like a sharp razor, working deceitfully. Whose tongue is that? That's speaking about the tongue of Esau, man. Working or like a sharp razor, working deceitfully. Everything he says, man, he's got an ulterior, Esau has an ulterior motive behind whatever he says. Okay? Thou lovest evil more than good in lying rather than to speak righteousness, man. Because if Esau was so righteous, if the white man was so righteous, they will come out and say who the real children of the Lord are. They will say, look, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you are, in fact, the biblical Israelites. We are Edomites. We are going to be your slaves. Put these chains on us. What you want us to do, okay? If they were so righteous, they would do that. But no, they are deceitful, man, okay? They are deceitful and they are wicked, right? So... It says, verse, verse 4, Thou lovest all divine words, O thou deceitful tongue. This is why they're going to use those Christians to do that, man. They're going to use those Christians to inform the people of what they want to do. Okay? All right? So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't got to get Romans. That's pretty much it, man. We ought to watch out for those clergy response teams, man, which Esau is getting ready to uh, uh, unleash on the next attack, which, which could happen soon. You, I mean, if you, to today's Saturday... You can see what happened in um, in uh, Iran yesterday. There was a in a, in a, uh, a so-called attack, and, and Iran's blaming uh, Iran is blaming America on during there was an attack during the Iranian military uh, parade, and there was a shooting there, man. And you know, Esau had something to do with it. All right, so that's pretty. So that's the things we got to watch out for, cause things are things are brewing up, man. You know, before you know it, it's gonna be. It's going to be 2019, man. But we still got a lot of months left for that to happen. Who knows if we, we will even get there. Okay? All right? So that's pretty much it. Until the next show, Shalom.